So I promised you a video and here it is. What we're going to talk about are semi-oculid vocal exercises. It's just a fancy term for putting equal pressure on your vocal folds from the air pressure coming up under them to the air pressure possibly coming back toward them so that they don't get completely fatigued from one end or the other. Now I'm gonna tell you how I brought my voice back very slowly after four months of being completely unable to speak with laryngitis. I went from this So I had pretty much complete control and of my dynamics, of the notes I was hitting, of my high notes, of some lower notes that you heard in there and was on top of the world. Then just a few years later, some sort of sickness struck me and I was out. When I came back, I had like three notes and they weren't pretty. So to start, I would find <laughs> what I call now my Liza One Note. If you've ever heard the Forbidden Broadway song, Liza One Note, it'll make sense to you. And uh, maybe I'll link it down below. So do for me a little hmm in your lower register and see if you see where your voice wants to stop. I'm guessing that's a C or a D. C. So my voice wants to stop on pretty much my lowest note which makes sense. It's first thing in the morning. I've got my Bette Midler bed head going on and that's where my voice wants to resonate most. It's kind of where I'm speaking right now. It's kind of very easy, very effortless. I don't have much vocal fry going on there. Perfect. Let's start there. So with the semi-oculated vocal exercises, what we do is we stop the breath, like when we're talking, from completely just forcing its way out through our vocal folds from one direction. We close our lips, we open our teeth, and we hum on an open vowel. Probably think ah. Mm, the ah kind of space in the back of the mouth. And just sing your note. Find your note. And you can also find your note if you don't have an actual piano in front of you. I use the T-H-E piano app. And when you open it, it looks a lot like this. And you can find your note on here. Find your note. And just hum it a few times. If you get to the point where you feel like you're going to cough 
or there's some fry going on, which is stop, take a break, reset. Probably the best way to reset, easiest way to reset is take a drink of water. Best way to reset, take a bite, say of an apple, get a big juicy bite of it, chew, 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 and swallow. It'll reset everything in your throat to go at the note again. Hmm. That time I landed a little flat, but still basically the C. Now you have two choices from here. One, you can move up a note. Two, you can open your Liza one note. If you don't feel like you have more than that single note, try opening to If you can get open vibrato on a ma, use the M to get you to the ah sound. Then that note is pretty secure. If you've got stuff going on where it isn't coming out, do not force it. Now, if you don't think you have that note yet, or you want to try going up a note, stay in the semi-oculated space and try going up a step. As you go up, I want you to feel like your jaw and your throat and the back of your tongue that goes so deeply down your throat just completely relaxes, even more so. The higher you go, the more you relax. The next step is to go up and open on a ma on the second note. Always returning to our one note. Now you do this all the way up a five, five note scale as far as you can go. Sorry, I forgot what key I'm in. for a goal, the best goal to go for is getting more notes going up than getting more notes that are opened to the ma. So if you get five notes going up and only the first two opened freely with vibrato, you're doing better than if you get three notes opened and only those three notes going up. Make sense? Now the next thing you do, we skip our chest register and we go to falsetto or head voice. And we do a little cry like, um, cry like, like a whimper. And wherever you can stop comfortably and feel hopefully some vibrato is going to be your upper one note. C 
sharp. Okay. So we start on your comfortable note, and from your comfortable note, we move from there in the opposite direction, down. Doing the same technique though, starting with that note. Now, of course, I'm jumping the octave here to hopefully help more female singers who weren't helped when I sang the low note. Um, so guys get the low note, girls get the high note. Girls get to take the low note up an octave, guys get to take the high note down an octave. So. Here is where the C sharp is for the guys. For a lot of baritones and basses, that's going to feel like it's in your falsetto. But I'm up here in soprano land. And I want it to be as light, beautiful, angelic as possible. Did you hear how I started that? I started it closed off in the back of my mouth. Here's open. Plenty of space to open up to the maw. found a note that isn't quite warm yet for me, probably because I'm way up in my head voice and it's morning time for me and haven't worked my way up there yet. And this isn't my regular warm up, so it's a challenge. By the way, this type of a warm up can be a challenge for anybody at any time because we get used to our patterns. So if we change it up sometimes, it could be good for us. So. challenge. So you got to keep up the speed a little bit. So if you don't have the speed yet, you don't have the breath yet, it's all a process getting the whole body to work together. So that's why I say if you can get all five notes together and the hmm, lips closed, teeth open, off, off space in the back, that is better than getting to the open vowel at the end back up.
landed a little flat on note two slash four coming up and landed a little sharp on the last note coming up. So really hear yourself, really hear where you are, where your struggle points are. It helps to say them out loud. It's like counting rhythms. You can say them in your head or you can say them out loud. Out loud, you hear it yourself and it just registers better. And that's all I want you to do. That's the first part of bringing back your voice. Bottom part of your chest register, medium to high part of your head voice. The middle will come back when it's ready. And I think that you maybe, if you were to go back to the beginning of this video and listen to me speak, you might hear me speaking a pitch or two lower than I'm speaking right now. I'm not totally sure, but that might be the case. And that is also a little more healthy for you when you're recovering from being sick to be speaking a little bit higher than where you want to, as long as it isn't in vocal fry. So, um, the next technique I have to show you is also a semi oculid vocal exercise. Um, it's a vocal function exercise. And um, I need to change positions real quick. So, one second. Okay, there we go. Now, this is a little more advanced. This is after you've gained some of your voice back and you feel pretty confident in some of the notes. You're like, man, I've got those five notes. Those are really secure. I feel good. Let's go on. Using the same five note scales or even a full scale. Easy for me, I started on C. I want you to first start with a half a glass of water, probably at least a six inch tall glass, six or seven inch tall glass, preferably a stirrer straw that's really thin. Um, maybe not the double looped sturdy stirrer straw, the single is better, but if you can't do that, you just have to work a little bit harder um, to get the airflow through consistently with a big straw like this one. Um, so for beginners, I definitely suggest like the red stir straw. And start out with just blowing bubbles at a consistent, constant rate. There, did you catch that? There was a break or two at the end where it stopped and then started and then stopped and then started. It wasn't because I stopped blowing out. I felt like I was still blowing out, but my airflow stopped, stopped being supportive. That's where when you're singing a sustained note, the note goes a little flat for a second and then comes back up and then goes a little flat and then comes back up. This is a great exercise to work on that, your breath support. Now we add the pitches. Mm -hmm. 
Did you feel some inconsistencies there with my bubbles? I sure did. Clearly I don't do this exercise every single day. Maybe I should. Maybe this is one I should add to my routine. It's one that I did when I was recovering, but it's not one that I felt like I needed consistently once I got good at it. Now, the other thing you can do with this exercise, besides the five notes, there's your top C sharp. Are sirens, or runs, however you want to think of it. Bottom to top. Hopefully you don't do what I just do and you stop at the top as the, the highest note. And you let it go. You release it out into the open, the top note, so that it, nothing comes in and presses in on your vocal folds when, it's, when they're at their most vulnerable state, their thinnest, most vulnerable state, your highest pitch. Then you try to do it, sustained bubbles, coming down from a semi-high note. One more time. Again, the semi ocular pressure coming back against the pressure of the air going against your vocal folds this way keeps them in balance. So that when it comes time again to speak more or to sing with open vowels, with warm ups, or with words and music, they're prepped, your vocal folds are prepped and ready. And you feel much more a great sense of security in going about your singing business. So thanks so much for checking out my blog and this video. And um, Buddy and I will see you next time.